Welcome back to Monitors Unboxed. A lot of you have been asking me to review the Gigabyte Aorus FO32 U2P. And yes, I do have one, and I'm currently in the process of testing it, but ahead of the full review, I wanted to make a dedicated video to discuss one aspect of this product, DisplayPort 2.1. A lot of the reasons I'm hearing for why people are interested in this monitor is specifically to gain access to DisplayPort 2.1 functionality. So rather than having to add a huge section to the review discussing this, I thought it was best to test DisplayPort 2.1 separately. Does DisplayPort 2.1 actually function as intended with this monitor? Is there a real advantage to DP 2.1 on these sorts of monitors compared to DP 1.4 with DSC? What's the DisplayPort 2.1 compatibility situation like at the moment? And what's the situation with cables? So let's discuss it all. So firstly, the Gigabyte Aorus FO32 U2P is one of several new 32-inch 4K 240Hz QD OLED monitors. And apologies here for the lack of B-roll of the monitor. I haven't gotten to that part of the review yet. All of the other monitors that pack a 4K 240Hz panel so far have used DisplayPort 1.4 that tops out at just 32 gigabits per second of total bandwidth, in addition to HDMI 2.1 with 48 gigabits per second of total bandwidth. Given that 4K 240Hz actually requires around 69 gigabits per second in a 10-bit uncompressed signal, monitors using either DP 1.4 or HDMI 2.1 are forced to use Display Stream Compression or DSC to access that signal. This is even the case when using an 8-bit signal which requires 55 gigabits per second at 4K 240Hz. The solution to this and the only way to access 4K 240Hz using an uncompressed signal with modern standards is to use DisplayPort 2.1. Confusingly though, DisplayPort 2.1 offers multiple different bandwidth configurations. Something labeled DP 2.1 could only use old transmission modes offered through DP 1.4, like HBR3 at 32 gigabits per second, or it could utilize up to three new transmission modes, UHBR10 at 40 gigabits per second, UHBR13.5 at 54 gigabits per second, and UHBR20 at 80 gigabits per second. It's pretty confusing for everyday consumers to have various different configurations all supported under the one DisplayPort 2.1 banner, so we need to be specific when talking about this standard as to what bandwidth is available, similar to many discussions revolving around HDMI 2.1. But basically, to support a 4K 240Hz signal, DisplayPort 2.1 UHBR20 at 80 gigabits per second is required, and the Gigabyte Aorus FO32 U2P is the first gaming monitor I'm aware of to support that standard. Gigabyte specifically labels the display as supporting UHBR20, so there's no confusion about its DP 2.1 bandwidth, and that's something I welcome and I would love to see that with other products. Theoretically, this means a 4K 240Hz signal without DSC with source devices that also support DisplayPort 2.1 UHBR20. So this begs the question, does the FO32 U2P actually work with DisplayPort 2.1 products, and what happens when you hook it up to something that doesn't support DP2.1? To find out how the FO32 U2P works with DisplayPort 2.1, I had to source a graphics card from the only series of GPUs that fully supports DP2.1 UHBR20, and that's AMD's Radeon Pro W7000 series GPUs with RDNA 3. In particular, I got my hands on a Radeon Pro W7800, thanks to AMD, which in terms of hardware configuration, it sits between the RX 7900 GRE and RX 7800 XT on the consumer side, of course. Uh, it uses a Navi 31 die and it packs 32 gigabytes of VRAM. Now it turns out that UHBR20 support on this GPU is rather limited, with AMD telling me it's only available through the mini DisplayPort connector. This GPU has four display outputs, which are all DisplayPort 2.1 compatible, three of them full-size ports at a lower bandwidth, but it's only the mini port with full UHBR20 support. On the monitor side, there are three DisplayPort connectors, a full-size DP2.1 input, a mini DP2.1 input, and a full-size DisplayPort output for daisy chaining. Both the full-sized and mini ports on the FO32 U2P support UHBR20. So basically, provided you plug in this Gigabyte monitor to the mini DisplayPort connector on a Radeon Pro W7000 series GPU, it will work with full UHBR20 bandwidth 
and AMB's Radeon software does report a link speed of 20 gigabits per second times four, indicative of UHBR20 with 80 gigabits per second of total bandwidth. So that's confirmation that when you have the right hardware, everything works as intended. It's a DisplayPort 2.1 UHBR20 product, and it works flawlessly in that configuration. What happens if you don't have a DP2.1 UHBR20 supporting GPU? Well, these work as well as DisplayPort is backwards compatible, but at reduced bandwidth and with DSC enabled. On an AMD Radeon RX 7000 series non-pro GPU, which support DisplayPort 2.1 devices up to UHBR 13.5 speeds, the FO32 U2P operates in a UHBR 10 configuration with 40 gigabits per second of bandwidth and DSC. This is seen in Radeon software as a 10 gigabits per second times 4 link. So it doesn't go up to UHBR 13.5 for that little bit more bandwidth and slightly less compression, it's just UHBR 10, which admittedly is higher bandwidth than you'd get through DisplayPort 1.4. On products that only support DisplayPort 1.4, which include NVIDIA's GeForce 40 series and 30 series, AMD's Radeon RX 6000 series and so on, it falls back to DP 1.4 HBR3 at 32 gigabits per second, and it continues to use DSC. But in all of these configurations, DP 2.1 UHBR20 without DSC, DP 2.1 UHBR10 with DSC, and DP 1.4 HBR3 with DSC, lots of acronyms there, you still get the full 4K 240Hz experience. No reduction in refresh rate, no reduction in bitrate, no chroma subsampling. Outside of DP 2.1 configurations, the FO32 U2P operates just like all the other 4K 240Hz QD OLEDs that only support DP 1.4. Supporting DP2.1, UHBR20 instead of just DP1.4 has its strengths and weaknesses. One of the immediate weaknesses that you might run into is that on products that support UHBR20, the monitor will always use the highest bandwidth connection possible by default, 80 gigabits per second, regardless of cable quality. It will not revert to a lower bandwidth configuration like 40 gigabits per second or 32 gigabits per second with DSC if the cable you are trying to use isn't good enough for 80 gigabits per second. Here is a real world example of this in action. I hooked up the FO32 U2P on the left with a crappy 2 meter mini display port to display port cable I had lying around, a cable I believe only supports DP 1.4 class bandwidth. The FO32 U2P attempts to run at 80 gigabits per second over this cable, but frequently drops its connection, and I even noticed visual artifacts when I attempted to run a game. With this cable that isn't certified for DP2.1 class bandwidth, the monitor basically doesn't work unless you manually switch the monitor to DisplayPort 1.4 in the OSD settings. Using this exact same cable on the ASUS ROG Swift PG32 UCDM works flawlessly by default, and that's because the PG32 UCDM only ever attempts to run at 32 gigabits per second with DSC, a much lower bandwidth configuration that the cable is capable of. So with a lower quality cable, supporting DP2.1 UHBR20 by default instead of maxing out at just DP1.4 with DSC is actually a disadvantage. To make matters worse, the only DisplayPort 2.1 cable the Gigabyte provides with the FO32 U2P is this short 1 meter mini DisplayPort to DP cable. There are many configurations where this cable will be useless, like if your PC is more than 1 meter away from your monitor, which could easily be the case. So I suspect that as buyers try and use the FO32 U2P with DisplayPort 2.1 devices, they'll have to purchase a good quality cable because Gigabyte, well, they really don't provide a suitable one in the box. Most other monitors I've seen come with at least a 1.8 or 2 meter cable that is a much more usable length than this. When you're spending over $1,000 US on your monitor, buying a cable is probably trivial from a monetary perspective, but there are a few things to know. Firstly, certified DP2.1 cables good enough for 80 gigabits per second of bandwidth are much more expensive than DP1.4 cables, especially for longer lengths. I bought some cables from Amazon Australia, just the top listing a brand called Silkland uh, that advertise certified cables. The 5 meter DP 1.4 version that I've got here, uh, that cost $28 Australian, while the 5 meter DP 2.1 version, which I've got here, that cost $46 Australian, down from the usual price of $56. So yeah, just an $18 difference. It is trivial relative to the price of the monitor, 
but it is more expensive than what you would pay if you were buying a cable for a DP1.4 monitor. You just need this one, which is obviously a fair bit cheaper. Secondly, you actually have to know to buy a DP2.1 cable and you have to specifically look for that. So you can ignore that. You have to specifically make sure you're getting one of these cables and you have to make sure that it isn't lying about its capabilities, which can be an issue at times. With DP2.1 UHBR20 monitors and graphics cards, less tech savvy users might run into issues where they attempt to buy or use cables that aren't good enough and get issues like flickering, blanking, or visual artifacts where they wouldn't have had those issues using the same cable on older DP1.4 monitors. And that's gonna create headaches for retailer and manufacturer RMA teams when they get complaints about their monitor not working. And this is the primary reason I believe most monitor manufacturers are being a bit more conservative in deploying DisplayPort 2.1 and why the majority are opting to use DP1.4 with DSC instead, at least for these types of monitors. Another reason is, of course, availability of DisplayPort 2.1 scalers. Now, I'm not suggesting that cable quality is a deal breaker and actually makes the inclusion of DP2.1 UHBR20 an overall negative. It's just something to be aware of as we move into the DisplayPort 2.1 era. These monitors require better quality, more expensive cables, and if you're buying an FO32U2P to use with DP2.1, make sure you get a good cable. The main advantage to the use of DisplayPort 2.1 is being able to run the signal uncompressed without DSC. So does this have any practical benefits? The main reason why I see people not liking DSC is that NVIDIA graphics cards do not allow you to use certain features like dynamic super resolution, DSR, when DSC is in use. This is an NVIDIA problem with the way their display engine works, not an issue with DSC monitors, as DSC is a standard technology included as part of the display port and HDMI specs. NVIDIA not allowing you to use some features when DSC is used is NVIDIA not really supporting DSC properly on the graphics card side? Nevertheless, the easiest workaround at the moment is to use monitors without DSC or that allow you to disable DSC. And understandably, some buyers want to future-proof themselves by buying a monitor that doesn't need DSC for the full resolution and refresh rate experience, so that they'll have access to this workaround in case NVIDIA doesn't fix it. Given this appears to be the best solution right now, fair enough. However, there are two things to consider here. Firstly, as I mentioned, on current NVIDIA GPUs, the FO32U2P uses DisplayPort 1.4 with DSC. So you'll run into the same feature compatibility issues as with other DP1.4 with DSC monitors. Merely having DisplayPort 2.1 capabilities doesn't fix this because NVIDIA's current graphics cards don't support DP2.1. Secondly, the idea to future-proofing is that you'll buy a DP2.1 monitor now and then with future generations of graphics cards, they'll be updated to support DP2.1 and you'll be able to upgrade your GPU and start using it. And in that future scenario, you won't need to use DSC, so you'll be able to use the workaround and have full feature support. That makes sense, but it does assume NVIDIA will use DP2.1 UHBR20 with GeForce 50 series GPUs, and it also assumes NVIDIA won't fix their DSC compatibility issues. In both areas, we really don't know what will happen. Ideally, I'd like to see an updated display engine that features both DP2.1, UHBR20, and full DSC compatibility so that even DP1.4 with DSC monitors can start using previously locked features like DSR. That would make the most sense. But what could happen is that DSC continues to have compatibility problems and DP2.1 support falls short of UHBR20 and we only get UHBR13.5 like current consumer RDNA3 GPUs from AMD. We just don't know what will happen. The best way to future-proof yourself is, naturally, with a DisplayPort 2.1 UHBR20 monitor. If things don't go the best possible way, there could be a future where a UHBR20 monitor is the only way to get full NVIDIA GPU feature compatibility. And the best way to prepare for that is a monitor with the newest connectivity. But what I want to ensure is you have all the relevant context so you can decide how necessary this feature really is and how much it should factor into your buying decision. There are some scenarios where you could buy a product for future-proofing purposes, never actually make use of that future-proofing, and regret your choice as you could have bought something different with a more optimized set of features and performance.
My personal belief is you should only heavily factor in DisplayPort 2.1 to your buying decision if you are planning to keep this monitor for a long time, if you are planning a GPU upgrade in the future to a product that supports DP2.1 UHBR20, and that you do genuinely want to use NVIDIA's features that don't work when DSC is enabled. If you don't really care about those features, it's not really necessary to get DP2.1. The other benefit to not using DSC is the uncompressed signal aspect itself. The theory here is that an uncompressed signal delivers better quality than a compressed signal. Makes sense, right? We've all seen how a highly compressed video looks worse than a less compressed video, so surely that applies to DSC. Well, no, it doesn't really. DSC is a visually lossless technology. What this means is that while DSC is not mathematically lossless, users cannot tell the difference between a compressed and uncompressed image. The criteria for using this terminology is established in ISO standards, and it's been verified through many research trials, so it's not just some made-up marketing BS. However, it should be noted that in some scenarios in the research papers I've read, trial participants were able to spot some differences, though this was uncommon, and the vast majority of time participants were unable to distinguish when DSC was used. And this does make sense to some degree. DSC uses a relatively low compression ratio, usually from 2 to 1 through to 3.75 to 1. In comparison, compressed video on a Blu-ray disc is usually compressed at a much higher ratio, above 50 to 1, relative to an uncompressed video. And that's for high-quality Blu-ray footage. Streaming services easily take compression ratios above 100 to 1. These are all significantly higher ratios than even the highest DSC compression ratio. DSC does comparatively little compression, and relatively speaking, at these ratios, it's easier to achieve visually lossless compression. Personally, I've done many side-by-side -side comparisons between DSC and non-DSC images, including using the FO32 U2P with DP2.1 UHBR20 and no DSC, directly beside the PG32 UCDM using DP1.4 with DSC, and I've never been able to tell the difference. I've looked closely, I've run through all sorts of real-world usage scenarios, it's just not something I can determine whether it's on or off. The FO32 U2P and PG32 UCDM, as far as I can tell, display images identically. Maybe there's some highly specific scene or test pattern that exists where DSC looks a bit worse. It's not something I've found or I expect to have any significant impact on your experience. So where does this leave the FO32 U2P and DisplayPort 2.1 right now? Well, I can confirm it works as advertised, but for most people with consumer graphics cards, you won't be able to utilize this functionality yet. But that's not a huge deal as it is backwards compatible with DisplayPort 1.4 devices. In fact, right now, it's running on an NVIDIA GPU with DisplayPort 1.4. The benefits to DisplayPort 2.1 on this class of product are minimal right now. To my eye, the image quality advantages to a DP2.1 signal versus DP1.4 with DSC are non-existent, and that's backed up by the research. The benefits are largely down to feature support and future proofing, and it's hard to say what happens there or how relevant this advantage will be in the future. I'd like to think next generation graphics cards will be built to fully support DSC rather than continuing to require brute force through higher link bandwidth, but I guess you never know. There's also some downsides to supporting DP2.1 relating to cable requirements. Personally, I don't think DisplayPort 2.1 UHBR20 is a must-have feature with these new 4K 240Hz QD OLEDs. It's nice to have, strengthens the feature set, but it's not something that would sway my decision significantly, at least not relative to panel performance, accuracy, and other features like, say, Dolby Vision. With that said, there will come a point where DisplayPort 2.1 will be a necessary feature, as older DisplayPort versions will be unable to carry the required signal even with DSC. I never want to see a monitor that cannot be run at its maximum refresh rate and resolution over DisplayPort simply because they didn't use DP2.1, which has been the case with many monitors and their refusal to use HDMI 2.1 where they really should be. So DisplayPort 2.1 definitely has its place, it's just not a necessary requirement for 4K 240Hz. That said, if you're a monitor buyer and you really want to future-proof your monitor, you want to make sure there's every scenario is taken care of, you want that DisplayPort 2.1 functionality with UHBR20, then by all means, go out and specifically buy this Aorus monitor for that specific feature. You will, of course, see our review of it soon to figure out whether everything else about this monitor is worth recommending. But if that is 100% a deal-breaker for you, of course, 
that will be a decision maker for you. With that said, I just want to make it very clear that UHBR20 is the bandwidth requirement for 4K 240 Hz. So make sure if there's, you know, future monitors that come out with DisplayPort 2.1, that you're getting one with UHBR20 so that you get the full bandwidth and DSC is not required. If it's UHBR10, UHBR13.5, it's very likely in those scenarios that the monitor will still use DSC for 4K 240 Hertz, even if it's advertised as DisplayPort 2.1. So yeah, be careful about that as well. Anyway, that's it for this one. The full review of the Gigabyte Aorus FO32 U2P will be coming up on the channel shortly. But as you can see, this was kind of a, a long video going into DisplayPort 2.1 discussion. I didn't want to put this in the, the main review because it would have made it way too long. So split that out into its separate thing and you'll see the rest of the results for this product in the coming weeks. So yeah, subscribe to check out that video when it goes live. If you want to support our independent testing and monitor analysis, then please consider supporting us through Patreon or Floatplane. Links to those are in the description below. And apart from that, that's it for this one. So I'll catch you in the next one.